Super Simer asks, you mentioned channels are way important. How about another lesson on using channels? I'm sure I don't know enough. Well, Super Simer, I'm sure you don't know enough. So let's talk about channels. We. All right, so channels uh, channels are the very building block of everything in Photoshop. Uh, channels existed uh, before layers. Uh, channels have been with us since Photoshop version 1. And what they are is essentially... Uh, you see how we have color? Color in Photoshop is really just the combination of a variety of black and white images. And when I say black and white images, I mean the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. This is assuming we're using RGB mode, which we'll assume for now. So you see how this is mostly red over here? If you look over in the channels palette, quick side note, ch channels palette can be found by going to window channels. If you look in the channels palette, you'll see that it lists red, green, and blue. In the red channel, it shows that this area of the picture is whitish. And where it's whitish, that's where it's most red. So you can see that's the most red. If I look in the green channel over here, it's most white down here, so I'll assume that the most green is down here in the image. Let's see. Yep, that looks like it's right. Where it's most white on the blue one is over here. So I assume this is where the most blue uh, images are. Great. So this is where the red is primarily, this is where the green is primarily, and this is where the blue is primarily. And in the channel palette, in RGB mode, red, green, blue mode, for those keeping track at home, uh, where it's white is where that color is most. So to kind of show you what I mean, we have a blue channel, a red channel, and a green channel. And when we combine them all together, here let's combine them all together, we get the composite image of what all of the colors are right here. If we only had the uh, red and blue channel, it would only look like this. And if we only had the green and blue channel, it would look like this. And this is basically what's called additive, additive colors, uh, which is to say if we have all three colors in there completely, so all red, or the, the red channel is all white, the green channel is all white on that pixel, and the blue channel is all white on that pixel, we're going to have it be white. And if all of them are all black on a pixel, it's going to be black. That was confusing the way I said it right there. But let's just uh, zoom in a little bit. And so this right here, I assume that's all white on all three channels. And we can see that it is. It's completely blue. It is completely red. It's also completely green. I grabbed the wrong one. Let's not talk too much about that. Uh, for those wondering, not that this really applies to channels, but the way that I did this is I just uh, grabbed a bla black and white version of the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel, copied it and pasted it, turned them to their color, set it on screen mode in order to make it so it's nifty and seeable and viewable. But feel free to ignore what I just said right there if that was far too confusing. Look, it's 3D! Woo! All right, let's get back to this image right here. So there's a couple of different uh, channels, and uh, right now we're in RGB channel, and that's what most people are do use when they're doing things for the web. Another mode, if I go to image mode, is CMYK color, and that stands for, yes, conversion, that stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. K is black because if they did B, that would be confusing with blue, which is in RGB mode. That's just the way it is. So if we look over here, we see that we have cyan, looks like this, magenta has like this, yellow is like this, and black is like this. So um, if you're looking at this and you're thinking that, oh, okay, so I get it, it's just like RGB. So this is where probably the most cyan is, and this is where the most magenta is, and this is probably where the most yellow is. Guess what? You're wrong. But that's okay, because that's why you're watching this video. CMYK actually works exactly the opposite way. So where it's black, that's where the most color is. So this is where the most cyan is. See? This is where the most magenta is. C, and this is where the most yellow is. Ah, over here. So, yeah, as you can see right there. Uh, and then black is just kind of in order to add blackness right there. Uh, now, what's interesting about this, let me switch back to RGB mode. I'm just going to do that by pressing undo. So, I'm just going to go between these two and check out the channel palette when I do that. You'll notice that it actually doesn't change that much. So look at red, red, green, blue, and now look at, or just look at red, just stick it to red. Look at red, and now look at cyan, and you'll notice they're virtually the same. Here's the reason for that. The reason that you see uh, red as white is because that's, uh, it's, it's additive colors that it thinks about the screen. 
The reason you see cyan as black, so this is black and this is cyan, just as this is red, ah, just as this is red and this is white, is because this is more uh, thinking about the printer. And the printer is going to lay the black part as a layer of cyan. Now here's the thing. Red is a complementary color with cyan, which is to say they're opposites. Uh, green and magenta are opposites, and blue and yellow are opposites. So if we're seeing it be black where yellow is showing up, and we're seeing it be white where blue shows up, ah, where blue shows up, that's going to be the opposite right there. I'm not sure if that completely made sense, but I'm pretty sure it did, so I'm going to keep going on. All right, so you're looking at this, and the question is, all right, this is great. I can see that it's made up of this uh, red, green, and blue. When you combine them together, that's how we get a color image in Photoshop. Whenever we look at a color image, any color image at all, it is made of these red, green, and blue channels, each of them individually black and white. But because with those three primary colors, we can create any color, we get all the colors of the rainbow with that. Why does this matter? I mean, it's cool from a theory perspective to know what's going on behind the scenes of Photoshop, but, you know, really, why does this matter? Well, let's take a green screen photograph here. Let's do a little bit better one like that. Now, I'm going to look at the individual channels here. Red, green, blue. So you'll notice that if I go to green, green is all white, and these are all colors. So if I were to copy this channel out, paste it in right here, and let's go to layers here. You can see it pasted as its own layer. And then I'm just going to do a quick curves correction, and let's set this as white, and just everything else as black. Here we go. And that looks pretty good right there. I'm going to say, OK, copy this, and just copy this, and say, create a mask for this, paste in the, uh, excuse me, paste in this right here into the mask. Let's actually ver invert it. Very simply, because we were able to understand how channels we worked, we were able to very quickly get a selection of this on a green screen. Now that was a little bit confusing, so I actually have a video dedicated to exactly how to do that. So if you just click this box right here, this little fady gradient thing, here I'll even type it in right here box over here, you can actually go to a much more in-depth thing of moving channels into masks. So anyhow, that's one use of uh, using a channel right there. So that's one great thing about channels. What's another great thing about channels? Well, I showed you RGB mode. I showed you CMYK mode. There's one other mode that you can do channels in. And that's LAB mode, and very few people know about this mode. The way that this mode works is instead of breaking it into red, green, blue, or cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, it breaks it into lightness, A, and B. And what A is, it's a gradation of colors from purple to green, and what B is, is it's a gradation of color from yellow to blue. I'm not going to get into LAB mode because this can be a little bit confusing right here. Uh, Dan, Dan Margolis. Google Dan Margolis LAB color and you will see some amazing results of things to go into LAB color. It gets a bit of depth. But one thing you can do with LAB color is if you only affect the lightness. Here, let's, uh, let's actually go here. Go into curves. You can see I can affect lightness channel, A channel, or B channel. If I'm only affecting lightness, I can actually control the contrast with having absolutely no impact at all on the hue. Anyhow, this is something I imagine you're not going to get into if you're doing channels for the very first time. Uh, let me show you one other thing that's uh, pretty amazing with channels and how it's the very much the building block of how everything's based off of. Let's say that I wanted to turn this into black and white. This is a terrible picture to turn into black and white, but hey, let's say I wanted to do it. So I'm going to click on black and white right here, and in my properties panel this uh, pops up. Oh, Photoshop CS6, you so exist now. And what you'll see exists is red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. Sound familiar? It should. It's the three channels of red, green, blue, and the three channels of cyan, yellow, and magenta. So all we're doing is we're mixing and matching those three individually black and white images, and it's a matter of how much of each do we want to show. Is that confusing? You look confused. I'm seeing on your face you're a little bit confused. All right, so let me show you exactly what that's doing. If I were to copy the red channel, here, let's move the layers out, and paste that in. Here, here we go. Ah, 
here we go. So you see what I needed to do in order to paste it in was to see all of the RGB colors by clicking on RGB, then press paste. Let's call that red. And then I'm going to go to the green channel and press control copy and then paste it. And let's call this green. And then go to the blue channel, select it all, and then paste that in. And let's call this, you guessed it, blue. Now all that I'm doing when I'm moving those sliders around is I'm basically affecting the opacity of how much green do you see, how much red do you see, and how much blue do you see. So I'm going to actually set the uh, background as, I don't know, let's just do it a uh, neutral gray. So let's set this to a uh, completely 50% gray. I assure you I know how to do that. It's probably just 50, 0, 0. There we go. And I know that because L goes from 0 to 100, and I know how channels work, and I'm super smooth like that. No amount of knowing Photoshop is going to make you super smooth. Just just going to tell you right there. That's that's just a, a fun fact. Uh, Photoshop uh, does not help you with the ladies. That's that's just a sad thing about it. And really all I'm doing is I'm moving around the opacity. And that's what's happening uh, when here, let's uh, delete all of this right here. That's basically a, a simplification of what's happening when I go to black and white and I just move these sliders around. It's just basically showing how much of this shows and how much doesn't. And that's pretty cool. And uh, okay, j just to, to show you a little bit more, if I go to curves, so let me just go to, well, here, I'll go to curves here, how you're supposed to go to curves. If I go to curves, what am I affecting? RGB is affecting all of the channels at once, like a, you know, stupid, lazy hacksaw. But red only affects the red channel. Check that out in the uh, channels palette down there. Blue, or green, whatever, it goes in its own order, only affects the green channel. And blue, only affects the blue channel. And in that way, you're able to have much tighter control over the colors because you understand what's happening in the background. Let me say one more thing, and then we'll call it a day with this video. One good thing to understand about R, G, and B is the opposite of red is cyan, the opposite of green is magenta, and the opposite of blue is yellow. How do you remember that? R, G, B, C, M, Y, and forget about K. Which means, if we're in curves and we move red up, it becomes more red. If we move red down, because, well, it becomes more red because the red channel is becoming more white. Get it? I hope so, otherwise I've done a bad job of explaining. If I move this down, it becomes more cyan. And why is that? Because the red channel is becoming darker which means you'll see more cyan, or less red. I think I've talked about this in previous places, but this is the way that it works with channels. More green, more magenta. I'm still on the red layer, excuse me, red channel. Uh, more green, more magenta. More blue, more yellow. So channels are a really, really powerful thing to know. And unless you understand channels, you can't get that fine-tuning of color correction because you're not even understanding how it's working. And keep in mind that there's nine channels out there. Red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, L-A-B. All right, that might have been 10. That was definitely 10. And it's actually using all 10 of those channels that you can get the maximum level of nice black and whites. You can get the maximum level of color adjustments. Uh, God, we're getting into Dan Margola's territory here. Anyhow, that's a not-so-brief explanation of what channels are. I hope that answers your question, Super Symra. Am I pronouncing that right? Kymra? Uh, I am planning on doing more with colors, but this was just kind of a brief sample. Uh, thank you. This has been Jeremy Schuback. Click subscribe if you liked it.